Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we are going to install .NET Core in my Linux OS. And we're going to create a .NET Web API project and then run it. So let's get started. So first I'm going to be installing the .NET SDK and the .NET runtime on Ubuntu. And I'm using Ubuntu 20.04 and I'm going to be installing .NET 5.0. So for 20.04, these are the documented steps. So I'm going to open, open the terminal and run these commands. And then go back again. The next step is to install the SDK. So I'm going to copy that. Okay, and that's completed. And the last step is to install the runtime. So I'm going to copy that command again and then run it in my terminal. So now that I have it installed, I'm just going to double check the installed versions of the SDK and runtime. And I can do that by checking the SDK version. I can run that command. And I have 5.0.202 installed. And then again for the runtime version, I can run the list runtimes command. And again, it shows me .NET Core 5.0.5 To create a new Web API project, I would go back into the command line and I have created a folder over here called Web API and under this folder I will create my project. And in order to create the project, I just need to run the .NET CLI command called .NET New Web API. So this will create the project files that are required to run within the folder. In Linux, I'm using VS Code to do all my development work. So I'll now open this project in VS Code by just saying code and dot, which is the current folder. I have now opened a previously created project called CarFinder and in this project I am working on simulating a web application where I can search for cars. This is the same template that gets created when we create a new web API project and over here you can see that the same template it includes the weather forecast controller and I have just added a new controller called test controller. And uh, I'm going to run this project I'm just doing debugging by pressing F5. And this is going to open a browser window in localhost 5001. And if I go back to my project, in the startup, you can see that this automatically includes the Swagger endpoints. So what I can do is if I go back to my web browser and I, I do Swagger, it will actually load the Swagger. So I can see my endpoints over here. In my test controller, I'm just returning a te test message saying this is a test message in my get action. And in the weather forecast controller, I'm returning an enumerable list of weather forecasts. And going back to my browser, I can test these endpoints. So if I test the testing endpoint, I can just click on the get and then click on try it out. 
So this is a message that it returns. And similarly, I can test the weather, weather forecast endpoint. And over here, we can see that it returns a list of weather forecasts. Okay, so now I have done more modifications to my API. And what I really want to achieve is to create an API of cars where I could list a number of cars, delete a car, add a new car, or modify an existing car. So I have created a model of cars. So where I have the car, which has the name, make, model, year, the number of doors, and the body type and transmission. And then the body type is a list of enumerable of body types. And then I have the engine, which has the cylinders, the size of the engine, the power, and some description. And then I also have an enumerable of transmission, which is either automatic or manual. I have also created a separate folder called service. And within the service folder, I have an interface for the car service. This interface basically provides all the operations that are permitted, like get cars, add car, update car, and delete car. And then this interface is implemented by the car service, where I basically will further implement all these interfaces. So currently nothing is implemented, but my intention is to now implement these interfaces. In my startup.cs, I have actually injected the car service and in the interface by calling services.addSingleton. And I have passed the iCar service, the interface, and the car services class. And back in my controller, I have created the car controller. And over here, I will inject the object of the service. And then I'll use that service object to perform the various operations for my controller. Get cars, add a new car, update the car, and delete the car. So now I have further implemented the car service. And I have implemented all the methods that are supported by the iCar service interface. At the moment, the car service doesn't actually connect to any database. And I simply just have a list variable over here. And this will store a list of cars in memory. Whenever I add or delete any car, this list will get affected. In my car model, I'm using the body type and transmission as enumerable types. And for these values, it returns me an index instead of the actual enumerable value. So what I have done is I have annotated that with a JSON converter and I'm converting the JSON type to string. And when I look at the schemas, you can see that the body type and transmission are returning me the indexes. But because I have done a JSON annotation, if I use a post method, let me post and add a new car. So let me give an ID of one. Let's say, I'll make, set the make as fold, model as falcon, year is 2009, let's say it's five doors, and body type is sedan, which is zero, and transmission is automatic, which is zero. If I execute that, you can see that when it returns me the values, it actually converts those zero and zero indexes into the actual enumerable value. So that completes today's video on .NET 5 Web API project. And do stay tuned for more. And thanks a lot for watching.